Right. So I feel like all TED Talks start with a very profound statement, so I'm going to start with mine. And that is one of, if not the most important spaces that we spend our time in, throughout our time as young people, is the classroom. Is the classroom. For many of us, we spend approximately 13 years of our life in a space that varies. Now today I get a chance to talk to you about the 21st century classroom. Before I do, I want you to take a trip with me. So we're going to go 100 years in the past to the 20th century, where classrooms look a little like this. So what you see is the instructor who is the source of all knowledge and his pupils who are actively engaged in what he is saying. There's typically a nice wooden desk that the students are sitting at. There's a nice wooden desk for the instructor that's typically in the middle of the class. And what you don't see behind him is probably a really nice chalkboard to write on. Now what I want to do is I want us to fast forward to what we thought classrooms were going to look like. And I want to use probably one of the most credible sources that exist around future classroom design. And that's the Jetsons. So by show of hands, how many of y'all ever watched the Jetsons? OK. So with the beginning credits of the Jetsons, you saw young Elroy and young Judy dropped off to class in these little cool pods. And when they got into class, it looked a little like this. So very similar to what our classes looked like 100 years ago in terms of how our students were sitting, actively engaged in what the instructor is saying. But two major things are different. The first is our teachers were replaced with robots. And the second, which I find extremely fascinating, is they're still chalkboards. Right? They're still chalkboards. So now let's fast forward to where we are now, present day. And what we see is things haven't really changed that much. So we still have road desks. Still made of wood, still chalkboards. In some cases, we've replaced chalkboards with dry erase boards. But the instructor is still the focal point of the course, right? is the source of all knowledge. So my colleagues and I were talking about this last semester and thinking about what could we do to change something that hasn't changed in over 100 years. And our campus applied for a grant. And our system office at Lone Star College gives faculty members an opportunity to think of innovative and creative ways to change our classes. And we propose what we call the 21st century classroom, the 21st century classroom. And our goal was to take something that's been so traditional and shake it up a little bit. So we found this class. This is actually one of the classes that I get a chance to teach in. So a little different, right? We have some really nice brown tables. And I really like the comfortable chairs there, right? So your traditional kind of bucket seats. And we turned it into this. Now, one of the most fascinating things about our 21st century classroom is the ability to move around. So I'm an instructor that likes to move, and I do not want to be the center of attention. And our classroom gives faculty members the opportunity to move around and be engaged, and it strips away that imaginary barrier that exists between students and the instructor. So now I can teach from the front of the class, the side of the class, the back of the class. I can sit down at one of the tables and be engaged with students. And we have this freedom to move around. The other thing is, our students get a chance to move around. So one of the things that I thought was really trivial but makes a really big deal are the chairs. So if you see here, there is a rolly chair that is vacant, and it gives our students an opportunity to collaborate really quickly. So as opposed to me saying, all right, everybody, we're going to break off into groups, grab your desk, uh, grab your books, and move to a group, they can get in a chair and slide to the next table to collaborate with their peers. I want to spend some time now talking about the actual technology in our 21st century classroom. And the first thing that I want to point out is our collaboration tables. So we have four collaboration tables that sit in our classroom. And our students are able to use laptops that are provided by our department to plug in a power source and also plug it into an HDMI cord and show what is on their laptop on a 40-inch monitor that's mounted to the end of the table. Now, our classroom holds about 24 students. And it really gives us a chance to bring students together to talk about innovative ways to do their work. Now, another amazing thing that you may see here is a little switchboard. <laughs> now, when students uh, want to switch from one screen to the next, so you see our student Merrick here is working on um, an assignment. If another student's plugged in, they can push computer number two or three, and it will show what is displayed on their computer on one of our main monitors here. 
So we are able to give students an opportunity to share their work and to do a really good job of collaborating with each other. The next thing that I want to point out is our smart board back here in the back. So this gives us the capability to write on the board so we don't have to worry about um, writing information and then it being erased and not being able to capture it. Students can write on our boards and they can save it and open it up and we can continue a discussion that we may have had last class. Uh, they're able to go in and advance slides. I'm able to do some really amazing things with our smart board. What you can see here is students collaborating with what I would call uh, my favorite piece of technology in the class, and that is our huddle board. So we've ripped out traditional chalkboard, and we've placed six double-sided removable dry erase boards on each side of our classroom. So anytime that I want students to work on a specific project, and what you'll see here is a lesson that I taught on learning styles, and I broke students up based on the way that they learned, whether they were visual learners, oral learners, reading, writing, and kinesthetic learners. So they literally can take a dry erase board off of the wall, bring it to their tables, work as a team, and then display their work in front of their class. Now the amazing thing about the classroom in itself is it gives us the opportunity to teach to those. So it's naturally set up for us to teach to our visual learners, our oral learners, our reading, writing learners, and our kinesthetic learners, whether it's through the keyboard, whether it's through them writing on the board, whether it's through their natural interactions with each other as students. Now the most important thing that needs to happen in terms of change is we as instructors need to change the way that we teach. So for many of us, we're used to teaching in a traditional style classroom where I stand here in front of you and I talk. I may have a PowerPoint, I may have something I write on the board, but again, I am the source of all knowledge and this classroom gives our students the ability to be the source of information, for us to share as a collective group what it is that we're learning. So as instructors, we have to reprogram ourselves, especially for those of us who've taught the same thing the same way over and over and over again. So we need to change. That inspires creativity. We have to be innovative in our instruction. So we have to go back to the drawing board, look at our lesson plans, and figure out what we need to do to ensure that we're using our classroom to its full potential. Now, in order for us to secure the grant, we had to do some research. And there are four key areas that we looked at, and what we found was, Students' level of academic self-efficacy increased from the beginning of the semester to the end of the semester. So they felt more confident in doing college-related tasks, so taking notes, speaking with their instructors, doing research. We also saw that peer group interactions increased. So these students were first time in college, first generation college students, and they felt like they established relationships, right? They felt connected to their peers in the classroom. The other was 21st century literacies, right? So these literacies are around students' ability to analyze, synthesize, and make sense of large amounts of data. So we saw our increase in knowledge in that area. And then lastly, 21st century literacy understanding. So students were more aware of how to use programs like Microsoft Word and Microsoft PowerPoint and understood the rules around social media and understood what plagiarism was and why it was so important to not plagiarize. So we saw a huge growth in our students. Now, as a community college, we really have two major focuses. One is academic transfer. So we have students who come to us that want to transfer to a four-year institution. And then we have other students who want to go immediately into the workforce and start working. Now, I would argue that our responsibility is to prepare all of those students to go into the workforce. And what I found online was that Forbes has 10 essential skills that they want their employees to have. And I have these in order, from most important to least important. And the number one thing is their ability to work in teams. We also see the ability to make decisions, to plan, to organize, to process large amounts of information, to use technology, right? To be able to sell and influence their others. And our classroom is designed to support all of those. So we've transitioned a classroom from being a space where the instructor is a source of all knowledge to we're now cultivating young people to be able to go out in the workforce and be successful. So what I want to tell you today is that change is coming. For those of us who are instructors, for those of us who are students, change is happening, and it's happening in the classroom. So we're fortunate to be one of 80 classrooms, not 80 campuses, but one of 80 classrooms that are formatted as our 21st century classroom. And Lone Star College has three of them, and we're looking to build two more. So change is happening. Now how I want to close is with a quote from Bill Farader, and he says that there's nothing magical about any tech tool. 
Right? So there's nothing magical about any tech tool. But the real magic rests in the hearts and minds of the teachers who use digital tools to introduce students to new individuals, new ideas, and new opportunities. Thank you.